This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on patent rights waiver for COVID-19 vaccines. The participants are Ashok Sajjanhar, former diplomat, and Simran Sodhi, journalist. So today we are discussing the decision taken recently by the US and the Biden administration, which announced that it supports waiving intellectual property protection for COVID-19 vaccines as countries struggle to manufacture the life-saving doses. We've also seen that the European Union has stepped forward and said that they would support the US in this. Ambassador Sajanhar, when we see the COVID epidemic, which is wrecking the world globally, and we see this decision by the United States, which has also been hailed by WHO, how much of a booster is this for countries like India, for other countries which are struggling to contain this pandemic? You would recall, Simran, that the whole issue was brought in front of the global community. It was taken to the World Trade Organization by South Africa and by India in October of 2020. Recall by that time there were no vaccines that had come onto the scene. But it was expected that vaccines were around the corner and that is why we had said that it is necessary if we are to vaccinate, if we are to inoculate about 7.8 billion people of this world, then it should, uh, the production, the manufacture, the distribution, the administering of uh, vaccines has to be made uh, freer and much more liberal. And that is when uh, both India and South Africa had gone to the WTO asking for a temporary waiver of the intellectual property rights of COVID-19 vaccines and some other medicines and inputs. And uh, you would see that it has taken seven months or so just to get one uh, agreement, one uh, approval of a waiver from the United States. So I would say better late than never, but still, this is the first step and it's a baby step. There is still a lot of work to be done. The matter has come in front of the WTO. On Thursday, the discussions are to start and uh, it could take a long time. But at least uh, we have uh, positive uh, signals coming from the European Union. As you said very rightly, the president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, she has said that we are willing to discuss it. So, you know, like President Biden, he has said that we are willing to support it. EU has not said that we are willing to support it. They said we are willing to discuss it in the WTO. And there are some countries, particularly Germany, which is the biggest economy in the European Union, which has said that we should not be going this way because it has a large number of pharmaceutical companies. And everyone should remember that these pharmaceutical companies are extremely extremely powerful. They have huge clout. They have huge uh, chests of uh, resources, whether it is Merck or it is Roche or any of the others. They are German companies and uh, they will, I'm sure, try their very best either to deny or delay or to dilute whatever waiver or approval is uh, provided by the WTO. Mr. Sajanar, as you pointed out, the reaction of the pharmaceutical companies. We've also seen that the stocks of major pharmaceutical companies that produced the vaccines, including Moderna and Pfizer, they dropped sharply after the U.S. made the announcer of the potential waivers. We've also seen the pharmaceutical research and manufacturers of America. They have expressed their opposition and their disappointment with the Biden administration. And we've also seen some people like Bill Gates have also come up and said that maybe this is not the way to go about it. This might in future also hamper innovation, the kind of innovation that we saw in the last year, a quick research testing to quickly come up with vaccines to deal with the COVID crisis. Do you feel that there is any strength to the argument being put forward by the pharma companies and by a few people like Gates? You would recall that when discussions on the trade related aspects of intellectual property rights. They were taken up at that time, you know, it used to be the general agreement on tariffs and trade in 1986. And that was the time that the pharma companies also, because they are very strong, they're very powerful, they're very influential. They had said that uh, we cannot invest in innovation unless we get product patents the world over and unless we increase the duration of the patents. Uh, to at least 20 years. You would recall at that time, India used to provide only process patents and we used to provide patents for 14 years. Anyway, as a result of those negotiations, it was uh, decided when the WTO came into operation on the 1st of January 1995 that uh, we would be granting uh, product patents and they will be added for 20 years. 
but when the world is uh, faced with the once in a century crisis of the nature of uh, covid-19 where we have seen that uh, whether it is prosperous countries whether it is rich or powerful countries or it is poor undeveloped countries that it respects no one then i think the profits uh, should be put on the sidelines and saving lives should be the primary concern also similarly we need to remember that there cannot be any islands of safety you know whether it is the united states or it is germany or it is european union they cannot uh, rest behind the argument that as long as we are vaccinated we are safe no not at all because like it was happening in uh, the united states last year it is happening in the european union the united kingdom even uh, late last year early this year even now some of the countries in europe are very seriously afflicted by this virus like what india is going through so there are going to be waves uh, from one country to the other also i think we need to remember is that no one is safe until everyone is safe so if we want to protect ourselves behind shields of these vaccinations that is not going to happen so in self interest itself the countries uh, need to recognize and need to ensure that even uh, low income countries even poor income countries are able to get vaccinations the sad part of the story and the inequality is so glaring that uh, so far more than 1 billion doses have been administered all over the world only 0.2% of them have been administered in low income countries also 53% of the doses that have been administered have been cornered by the richest 14% of the countries so there is so much of disparity so much of gap so much of inequality that uh, it is uh, extremely glaring and it needs to be corrected there are cases of countries like canada for instance it is hoarding vaccines which are five times what are required to vaccinate its total population even as far as the united states is concerned it has committed stocks inventories of about 1.2 billion doses while its population is just about 300 million that means even if it were to give uh, two doses to every person it still has more than twice of what it really requires so this sort of vaccine nationalism when uh, rich and prosperous countries are hoarding and not allowing even vaccines or the technology to go to or even iprs to be shared with developing countries that does not bode very well for the world ambassador sachin has we also seen that there is talk that now when once the negotiations start the world trade organization the wto it's going to take a lot of time it's not going to be easy one getting all the countries to agree and then it will take a little while before this waiver happens how do you see what is going to happen at the wto you think going forward india and south africa is in one position the us is committed to supporting them we have as you pointed out the european union still thinking about it germany coming out and saying that it is not in favor of this so how do we expect the wto talks the negotiations how do we see them going forward from today simran you know negotiated in the wto for more than 5 years so i know how slow and painstakingly excruciatingly tiring this whole process is so of course uh, lawyers delight but it is uh, really takes a long time because you continue to negotiate the legal language of any waiver and it is going to be as it has been mentioned it is going to be temporary so of course i would like to applaud the leadership of the united states in having come to this decision against the views of its very powerful lobby but i think he has uh, president joe biden has uh, taken this decision in the interest of global health and well being so i think he needs to be commended for that he needs to be applauded for that and if uh, the united states were to put its uh, full weight and full full force behind it as the us trade representative has said that uh, she is going to do then i think it will be much quicker to shore up support from the european union because i think the united states gives provides leadership in these cases 
So if the United States lets it be known that they are serious about it and they want things to happen quickly, and we might be able to get a temporary waiver. But otherwise, it is also feared that if it takes too long, then in any case, if it were to take uh, by the end of the year or next year, then uh, the companies, Pfizer, Moderna, all these companies would have already made their uh, profits, would have already sold whatever they have to sell sell at the higher prices and they would be in a very comfortable position even when the waiver were to come through. Master Sajuna, there is another thing that has been written about ever since the United States made the decision and that is something you also mentioned, that is about the vaccine diplomacy. And some people have said the vaccine diplomacy has also become a major part of the geopolitical competition between the US and China and to some extent Russia with its Sputnik vaccine. And the US now coming up and saying that it supports the waiver, this move will severely undercut the Chinese efforts to spread its vaccine and and hence its influence globally. How much credit do you give to this argument? I think it has uh, a lot of merit in uh, this argument because China has been using right from the start of this pandemic. In fact, even before the pandemic, it has been using the strategy of economic coercion. You would recall that last year it had uh, started using what was known as the mask diplomacy. That means if countries were raising questions about the origin of the virus, then China would say that we are not going to supply you with masks, we are not going to supply you with test kits, we are not going to supply you with uh, other essential medications. So it was trying to change the policies and the views of different governments through its uh, coercion as far as the implements and uh, the other uh, provisions to deal with the virus are concerned. Now what it has started doing is it has said that individuals who are not vaccinated with the Chinese vaccines they will not be allowed entry into China. And you know China is a very significant economic player in the world. So there are very many people who visit China. But this is again a sort of uh, blackmailing these people and forcing them to take on Chinese vaccines. But I think once this aspect uh, comes through, once there is uh, the waiver, and of course after the waiver, there are other challenges also. There are other hoops through which the world has uh, to jump through. It is not only the technical aspect of waiver of the intellectual property rights, but it is also technology. And this is what India has uh, stated, that even after the waivers are granted, we also need technology. There is also the need of setting up uh, production facilities, setting up manufacturing facilities, because they don't come uh, very easy, particularly as far as uh, Pfizer, Moderna are concerned. Then there are also going to be the challenges of uh, transportation, because if there are vaccines which need to be stored at very sub-zero temperatures, at cryogenic temperatures, then how do you store them? How do you transport them? Particularly when we are talking about developing countries, use of these vaccines by developing countries, then how do you go about it? So I think there are a large number of obstacles and challenges as we navigate the way from here to providing vaccines to all the people who need them around the world. Do you feel that in a world that is so divided on so many issues, this move today to have a good global public health policy and the first step is this waiver of IP rights on the vaccination? Definitely, it is a good move for global public health policy. I think it is a good move for the U.S. leadership because this is what the United States has also been saying that with the advent of President Joe Biden, it's going to be diplomacy is going to be back. American leadership is going to be back. Alliances are going to be back. So I think from several aspects, this is a good move. But the United States should also, and the other countries like France and UK and others, which are supportive of this move, they should walk the talk. They should put their money where their mouth is. With these comments, we bring today's discussion to an end. Thank you. Thank you. You were listening to a discussion on patent rights waiver for COVID-19 vaccines. The participants were Ashok Sajanhar, former diplomat, and Simran Sodhi, journalist. 
This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on our website, newsonair.com. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks at gmail.com.